Hello everyone, I hope you're good and welcome back to another episode of Egyptian Feeling. Now I've been, um, this week was a little busy, uh, thankfully, and I've just been uh, to the north uh, finding a friend of mine. So today the episode will be done in, uh, it's a Sunday, so, so yeah. Um, Today we will do a tomb, which is the tomb of Hotep Sekenwi. Now I've been waiting for the for doing this tomb for a long time, and this is the tomb. And um, this is my favorite tomb <laughs> so far. And uh, the first tomb we that I was like super willing to study was the tomb of Kazakenwi, which we did already, which is the last king of the second dynasty. Uh, and today we will do the first king of the second dynasty. Uh, I've been waiting to do this tomb for a long time, and I, yeah, thank, like finally got together all the information that I needed. And uh, it's such a, um, it's a super interesting, it's a super interesting one. Uh, it's uh, I feel strange today, like I'm a little bit more like uh, I don't know, relaxed. I don't know why, but yeah, I'm super happy to do this. Uh, but yeah, I'm like, I don't know, uh, it feels like I'm relaxing. <laughs> um, how to start? Uh, first of all, this tomb is called the tomb, the gallery tomb A, and uh, obviously is in Saqqara, and is in, is in the south part of Saqqara. And just so you know where we are in terms of time, we are in 29, more or less, BC. And um, so, <laughs> like... Here again, like we're super far back in time. <laughs> this is still the early dynasty period. Um, just to just a little bit of a context here, the second dynasty of Egypt. Uh, just to give a few names, we have Hotep II, Raneb, Ninedjer, Weneg, Sened, Peribsen, and Kazakenwi. So, so this second dynasty. It's I mean, if you read all these pharaoh names, you're like it's a Architecturally wise is a super rich time. Now, obviously, if you compare it with the fourth dynasty, okay, well, and the third dynasty is like okay, maybe, but still, like if you if you see like the first dynasty, second, third, and fourth, there is a there is an obvious evolution in terms of architecture. So, yeah, I mean, uh, this is just the second dynasty, but still, like it's a, it's a, you're gonna see today. This is the first king and. Is already uh, crazy. This is already crazy. Now, what doesn't make sense to me is that this tomb is so complex and is so crazy good and composed, and you know that it's it's too much uh, in comparison to the Kazakhemwi one. Because Kazakhemwi is the last king of the second dynasty, so it's like what, like to maybe like something like a hundred years after this guy. And uh, yeah, Kazakhemwi is a great builder. He was the father of Djoser. He built so much. But in terms of complexity of the projects and stuff, I mean, you want to compare this, the tomb that we will do today with the tomb of Kazakhemwi that we did like two months ago? It's like, yeah, I don't know. It doesn't make too much sense because I still think this is a crazy tomb. <laughs> Anyway, um, so I will see. Uh, yeah, let's start with uh, some some info. again some more information. The Hotep Sekenwi, the name is um, it's the Horus name, and so the pharaoh pharaoh had like five different names, uh, depending uh, on in the period of time of, of the history of ancient Egypt, and this is the Horus name. So Hotep Sekenwi will mean like peaceful person. <laughs> Uh, between two powers, something like that, and we believe that, that we believe the archaeologists, like historians, uh, believes that Hotep Sekemi was like this again, like the, what someone that restored the power of the two lands, uh, like an armor did. Um, Manito in the Egyptiaca called this guy Boetos. And he says that there was an earthquake during, or, or at least like a big, like disaster kind of thing, happening in the reign of Hotep Sekenwi. And some believe that is the Sodom and Gomorrah episode of the Bible, but who knows, right? 
and yeah one thing that I have to mention before we start is that in the last video uh, we were talking about like rituals of the mastabas and uh, and I didn't know what the opening of the mouth was and basically the opening of the mouth was the ritual where the priests would open literally open the mouth of the mummy to be able to for the soul to eat and drinks eat and drink in the afterlife so it was actually a literal thing they were opening the mouth of the mummy and this will happen just before the burying just just before burying the body and yes so this is something cool so who yeah let's start so if you see where is Akar this is the Joser pyramid and uh, the step pyramid you know this is the whole complex and the tomb that we're gonna do is this one here in the in the white rectangle and it's uh, you can see there is a pyramid here now this is the pyramid of Unas now if you don't know Unas was like if I'm not if I'm wrong it's like the fifth dynasty but uh, it's the first pyramid that is the first actually building that has writings on the walls and is actually the first source of pyramid texts and uh, like uh, the book of the dead you know uh, if you don't know like you can just go back to see some like previous videos that we uncovered already the book of the dead but yeah and so what you can see from google maps is already like this line here which is like the entrance and another like there is a hole here now so this would be like uh, not the end of the tomb but uh, it's just uh, how you say it's like it was like it's it's a hole uh, now but it was not supposed to be as far as i know as far as i understood so the end of the tomb would be like sort of here this is where the burial chamber would have been now how long is this thing It's like 122 meters it's longer than a football stadium so just saying um, so we are in the south part of Saqqara this is the first guy who built in the south part of Saqqara so imagine there was nothing here and this guy out of nothing he started to build this underground tomb now underground tomb why this was not just an underground tomb obviously this is what what is left of this tomb is the substructure as we've seen the mastabas before this is the substructure and the archaeologists believe that on top of it there was the actual mastaba itself so the superstructure of the mastaba but today uh, this tomb is called the gallery tomb uh, but it was not in principle in theory was not meant to be a gallery tomb it was just meant to be a mastaba as, as, a, as any other but just four times bigger than the previous ones it's just a huge mastaba here as far as uh, as far as we know and so let's go and this is like the plan <laughs> of what we can of what we are able to reconstruct of the tomb because at the, there are a few corridors here that they're still not being excavated for some reason uh, so we don't know where they lead so, and there is they are more here in the south part of the tomb now you see how big this thing is right compared to the pyramid of Unas that is to the left you know <laughs> now we will go through the plan soon but this was just to tell you about the scale and the complexity of the spaces you know um, so there are like a hundred and plus chambers uh, there are stones on top of these structures that are like two meter thick limestones obviously they're not granite and this is something like five thousand eight hundred square meters of subterranean area so you tell me <laughs> it's nothing comp like this is like absolute this is a madness you know in comparison to the guys that would even come after this guy would be like Kaze Kenwi, which is this is a pharaoh that I love because of architecture, but you know, <laughs> still this is a such a it's a huge tomb, you know, it's a, it's a crazy tomb. This is Alessandro Barsanti, and he's actually the guy that discovered the tomb. It was an Italian architect <laughs> in the 1900. 
1900. Uh, he made a report on the I forgot the name, but there was a uh, like there was this like sort of magazine for historians or archaeologists that every year will collect the discoveries of people and collect them and you know showcase to the public. And this guy, I have been able to find the rep I have been able to find the report uh, of this guy. And I'm gonna show you. This is the plan he drew. So this is the Unas pyramid you see, and um, and also you you can see that there is here the what what you know what what is written here is the gallery subterranean, and he even says like it's like 15 meters here. And obviously this is like in French because the magazine was in French and you know 1900s the French were here. Uh, so everything that he discovered was just this stair down leading. But then he also started to excavate a little bit. So he found out that there was underneath this pyramid, uh, obviously it's not under the pyramid, it's just to the side. Part of it is underneath the pyramid. And so he, this is like the sketch that he did of the tomb. Now it's nothing like this, okay? So, I mean, I don't even, I'm not even sure that this is actually the sketch. Of, of the tomb we are talking about because uh, it's so different but in his report this is what is found uh, this is uh, these are the drawings that are there so uh, so this is the this is what is left of the Unas pyramid sorry but this is really what's what's left and you can see here to the right this is the entrance of Hotes Sekenwi tomb and the tomb is down it's you know under this underground of, you know and let's see so this is <laughs> the entrance of the tomb nowadays and this is uh, so now all this all of these pictures I mentioned the people that took the pictures down here so I hope I won't have any problem about credits because I'm crediting everybody here every time I use the pictures that obviously are not mine I credit people here so obviously and so this is the entrance and uh, as you can see there is this deep um, difference in uh, in height. This is very down down the ground, and you can see there is like this has been carved in the uh, in the in the bedrock, and there are some steps here. You can even see a little bit some steps here. And nowadays you can't uh, access the tomb, but I've been able to find the, uh, the the pictures of the inside. So I'm going to show you very soon. This is uh, also another picture, uh, probably in the 90s, and uh, this is a picture, this is more recent, so if you go now, it's like litter everywhere, so it, it sucks, because this is not a respected tomb, but actually it's one of the best tomb of Egypt we have, but anyway. <laughs> and this is the view of uh, the south of the Unas pyramid, if I'm not wrong, but Again, like uh, it doesn't doesn't seem to be right to me. So yeah, uh, forget this picture. <laughs> but uh, because this is actually what's what's going on. So you have the entrance here, and then you have the you know uh, there you have more the the not the exit, but the end of the tomb. So I don't know. Yeah, this picture was probably somewhere else. So this is the stele that was found inside and this is the stele belonging to Raneb which was the son of Hotef Sekenwi. Now we don't know if the tomb we're talking about is actually of Hotep Sekenwi, of Raneb, of or both. We are not sure about this. We just know that we found this and also we found uh, other stuff belonging to Hotep Sekenwi so we believe that is Hotep Sekenwi tomb slash Raneb. And this is the section of the tomb. Now you tell me how crazy this is. This is like, uh, you know, the pyramid that is back there, the Unas pyramid. Now, obviously, it's a little bit too steep to be this like this. But uh, anyway, uh, this is a fantastical rep representation. So this is the steps that leads, you know, down. And uh, what's going on here? So first you have the steps going down. And you have like this little door. That like, this little door will lead to is a public area where uh, the public will actually access uh, a few parts of this tomb, okay, to leave like some storage, you know, some some objects uh, to store stuff and, and etc. And uh, 
Then you have four portcullis stones. Four. Four. Now, this does, this doesn't, you know, we never saw anything like this before. We always, if, if we saw anything, we saw one portcullis. Now this guy have four portcullis. So it's just, wow. It's just, wow. And um, what would happen here is that the, the crazy thing is that on top of this space, there are still nowadays stones that are two meters thick. Two meters thick. And it's, it's limestone. So I'm going to show you later. Now, again, like we are a hundred years before Djoser, before the Step Pyramid. We are just at the very early times of Egypt. And, you know, the progress is so, you know, so so fast uh, so in this in this in this area is more obviously is more private and uh, I actually haven't been able to find what uh, what was all of this uh, area about Th there is no information about this tomb okay like I tried to gather as much as I could and uh, yeah but you can see also here on top the superstructure this is an a this is a theory this is an a hypothesis and uh, we suspect that there was like this mastaba uh, uh, like divided in two you know and um, but this is just a, you know it's a, it's a, it's a hypothesis and uh, it's proven by some evidence but yeah again and then there is this last part which is actually the part well, at the end of it, there will be the burial chamber. And uh, the tomb goes down s like almost eight meters in the bedrock. This is, again, this is the, the tomb that goes the deepest. This is the biggest. And this is the ones that use so much stone already this time. It's, 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 it's crazy. It's crazy. The Egyptians started to, to, to build with stone just now just with this guy uh, obviously they did before already but in not in, not not at this scale you know this is the first time they use like stone in a big scale and this is a hundred here before because you can we just like i mean it's so crazy and this is the plan <laughs> you can see it looks like the international space station <laughs> and you you can see right you can see the steps here to the left there are a few like 14 galleries and to the right there are other 14 galleries now you you know you can tell that again there was an artist here there was a plan here this tomb was planned there was an architect here there was somebody with a with a with a conception of space with a with a skill and this is 3000 bc <laughs> you know and the whole tomb is like 122 meters and uh, it's like 48 roughly wide and uh, it's uh, on top again there was two mastabas and then you can see the private part and the public part <coughs> and the burial chamber will be at the end and will be like this part now the funny thing is that uh, as far as I understood the burial chamber in this case and in the in other cases of the first dynasty if I'm, if I don't remember bad, uh, they would build the burial chamber as if it was a house. So this would be the toilet, and this would be like the, you know, the living room or something like that. Uh, but I haven't been able to compare this with any other like residential building because I haven't found any, <laughs> any, any, any other example. But apparently, this is how the layout would have been of the royal palace, which nothing has been left of it. And uh, and where you see the question marks is where the corridors have not been excavated yet. Uh, so you know, but and this guys again is the first tomb that is perfectly aligned north. <laughs> we are you know it's just a record breaking tomb. Uh, and like it's just crazy. It's <laughs> just crazy. Now I've been, again, this is all the pictures that I'm going to show you now are from the Izida project, which uh, is, uh, I actually going to have to reach out to them to one day, you know, ask for other pictures. 
but yeah they they do a great job they go to they they organize tours in egypt and they go in uh, places that are not public you know they are not uh, accessible to public and they take these pictures which are very useful for us so thank you Zida project uh, so this is the entrance you can see the stones here that hold a little bit of the ground on top now these are not the two thick stones uh, two meters thick stones they are a little bit uh, ahead but you can tell already that you know it's all carved here you can see the you know the horizontal lines here and what i can now this is the first it, I, i've seen these pictures before obviously before presenting to you but i actually wanted to look at them with you now for the first time in 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 deep like with some focus and so we're gonna do this together now so the stairs goes down you see and you you have the the stones on top and then the steps go still down so there was a part of the tomb that was uncovered and a part of the tomb that was covered now this seems to me these are stones already so it seems like this is the part where the, the two meter thick uh, the two meters thick stones will start and this is also cool is a picture of a portal if pro is probably this is probably the first portcullis and now this tomb was obviously plundered and replundered by by the robbers in in the thousands in in the millennials uh, okay you can see the stones on top here you can see this is limestone and this is some crazy stuff here is this just a crack yeah probably it's just a crack yeah this is the first um, this is the first gallery that is private to the right and then to the left and this this is the other portcullis now the stone of the portcullis would have been dropped by you know from the top down so so yeah that you can see already this the height of the tomb now it's like what three meters already so it's like twice the size of the man who's taking the picture uh, yeah yeah but we are like at this point we are already eight meters down now you can see the the, the tomb is being treated very badly you know they use it plastics here it's just they don't understand why they don't respect their tombs anyway this is one of the corridors probably to the left maybe and um, still more portcullis and now a cool stuff here is that in Egypt you can you can always see there are limestones that have these like red scars this is something cool uh, we like I've seen before already and yes, obviously there were some bats, <laughs> as always, in the tombs of Egypt. Yeah, okay, somebody there. And this is the part was that was uh, that that had fell, uh, or been plundered from the top down. I, we don't know. I don't know. But yeah, you can see. So this is you know you can see that the corridor is perfectly done. You know you can see from from the end to the beginning. Uh, without the portcullis stones <laughs> yeah these are the scars of the stones oh yeah there is a curious feature like you have this door and then you have these holes to the right and to the right, to the left now we don't know what they were used for maybe it was the maybe it was where the ceiling stones no it's not no it doesn't make sense i don't know i don't know but this is something that was done on purpose for sure and yeah keep going let's let's keep going and so this is the so you, you can tell how far deep we are in underground this is again it's like eight meters so we are really deep down there's a lot of work here in terms of construction and demolition and i suppose this is where the burial chamber would have been uh, we are at the end of the tomb but again, like you can't really tell. There are no details, and uh, this is just a corridor tomb, you know. And uh, everything looks like very coherent. And the the cool thing is that there. Uh, oh, oh, this is a circle here. That who knows what that is. But anyway, 
So there is a part of the tomb, which is the end of the tomb, where the walls don't are not straight anymore, but they tapers a little bit, if you can see like here as well. But it, what is more curious is the next pictures, which they tapers like from, you know, in a trapezoidal way, but in the opposite way, you know, normally we are able, we do like this, right, for the doors, but these are like, it's the opposite. So I really wonder what and why they did, <laughs> why they did this, but it's amazing, eh? It's so cool. Yeah, so yeah, again, this tomb was not, uh, this is my one of my favorite tomb ever, and uh, you know, there is not much information about this tomb again, and what's left is what is left, and it's not even accessible, so, but, uh, I mean, just look at the plan again, it's just, you know, what in the world is this, you know? If I was ever, like, to, to, to design a house or anything, like, I would definitely take this as a layout and, uh, and experiment with this, because it's, uh, it's amazing. It's a, it's a real labyrinth, isn't it? But uh, it's, not, it's not actually, like, the labyrinth will be here in this area, but anyway. Yeah, next week I suppose we will do the Tomb of Ninedger. Now, the Tomb of Ninedger is like the grandson of, of Hotep Sekenwi, and he also did the gallery tomb, but it's way more... Com it's not more complex, it's just way more dynamic. Uh, it looks like looks like an ant kind of uh, nest. But yeah, anyway, I guess i see you next week, and I hope you will be cool. Bye.